guys, and welcome back to the Virtual Reality Show, where we talk about any and all things related to virtual reality inside virtual reality. <laughs> I'm your host, Fia. Today, we're going to go under the covers of what you think you might know about the hidden side of your chat. As we get started today, I would like to clarify that this video, while educational, is intended for mature audiences. So if you do not qualify as an adult, please go ahead and skip this episode and go watch one of my uh, Minecraft highlights instead. Okay, okay, let's get started. You may have heard the acronym ERP thrown around casually, but a typical VR user doesn't know exactly what it means to do the deed behind closed doors of VR chat. In this video, I'm gonna walk through the process, but make sure you stick around to the very end because what's there may surprise you. But before we dive in head first to see what virtual intimacy is all about, I want to make a quick note. When referring to the sacred act that starts with an S and ends with an X in this video, I will be saying Flunarb to keep the YouTube bots happy. So anytime you hear me say that, just fill in the blanks yourself. ERP isn't really talked about too much and a lot of people get quite embarrassed to discuss it, but what it stems from is something quite common. Role playing is anything but rare in the online world, and I think most of us are familiar with the asterisk nozzles you, asterisk uwu culture that gets quite the cringy rep, which is likely why those who participate tend to be so secretive about it. The spin of role-playing in VR is that it's much more realistic. You and your partner or partners get to have bodies to inhabit and act as your own. You can then interact with someone much more realistically that way. If you give someone a virtual hug or a high five, then you are engaging in a sort of role-play. You can't feel them hug you back or their fist when you accidentally turkey, you just kind of act it out. ERP is just this, but what you are acting out with someone in VR is Flunarb. VR chat has an eligibility requirement of 13 years old, and seeing as there are underage teens playing this game, acts of Flunarb are prohibited, at least publicly. When you are switching worlds in VR chat, you'll sometimes see this little warning pop up saying, important, these actions can lead to bans, not safe for work avatars, behaviors, or content in public worlds. But of course, in a private world, adult users can do all the flunar they like. When people engage in ERP, they typically pick out an avatar to dress the part. There's special physics for body parts that can be added to avatars as well as collision so that other users can interact with them. Different animations or emotes can also be added as well. You won't find these types of avatars out and about, however, since having one in a public world is strictly forbidden and a one-shot ticket to a quick ban. The best way to obtain them is by uploading the avatars yourself into your VR chat account. There are loads of 3D avatar creators who specialize in these features that are up for purchase or commission. Just like with other custom avatars, having access to the model files then allows an individual to upload the avatar directly to their account for use in these private settings. So while having a Flunar Brady avatar is great, it doesn't stop there. For an immersive experience, European enthusiasts will often purchase full body tracking as it allows for a more accurate and realistic role-playing experience. But what I'm gonna talk about next will blow your mind. You might think part of the ERP experience is just not being able to feel the touch of another user and accepting that. However, there are some people who have something called phantom touch, where their brain interprets touch due to the sight of it without actually requiring sensory stimulus. I won't dive too far into this topic today because that is a whole episode all on its own, but it's important to note that for a select group of people, phantom touch does extend to acts of flu nerve. Most people don't have phantom touch, but there is a pretty impressive alternative, and this is where I think the conversation takes a sharp turn from being roleplay into being something way more intense and realistic. There's a technology out there called teledildonics that combines the idea of telepresence and flunarb activities. Telepresence is when you have a set of technologies that, when stimulated, sends that stimulus information to another corresponding technology in a remote location. So yes, it sounds crazy, but it works exactly how you think. There is a male and female equivalent that is able to sync up via smartphone app from the company Love Ends. 
While this technology is marketed towards long-distance couples, VRChat users have picked it up and created an entire hookup culture around it. With a small amount of internet digging or with the right connections, you can find huge Discord servers entirely dedicated to ERP and finding partners for it. Then they'll sync up their special lovin's tools and Flunarb the night away. <laughs> People will stop at nothing to get their needs fulfilled, and Flunarb in VR is just about one of the closest replicative experiences someone can get of it. This is just the tip of the iceberg for the future, as one of the driving forces for innovative technologies is, and always has been, Flunarb. I hope you feel educated on doing the dumb diddly deed inside of VR chat, since like I said before, a lot of people just don't talk about it. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the Virtual Reality Show channel for a new episode every week. Don't forget to follow my Instagram and Twitter, and if you're feeling extra generous today, then please check out my Patreon to help support the show too. Once again, thanks for watching. I've been your host, Fia, and I'll see you on next week's episode. Bye!